Hi, my name is Tom Clahosi Cole, and thanks for watching this video. I'm going to talk through some of my process behind making my concertina book, Space Race. Space Race was my first ever book and was published in 2012 with Nobrow Press. I started working on it in 2011, so nearly 10 years ago now. I'll start at the beginning and how the opportunity came around. I'd recently graduated, that's uh, some of my degree show work on the left, and I contributed a spread to Nobrow Sick magazine, The Double. I was asked by Nobrow to pitch a couple of ideas for a concertina book. They had already published quite a few at this point, and I was a huge fan of the Mika Lidberg one, Rise and Fall. So I was really excited and a little bit nervous about pitching to do one myself. So a concertina is a long book where pages are folded and stuck together a bit like an accordion. A concertina can be read either by turning the pages like a book or read as one long image when it's fully opened up. They have a front and back, which means you can split up a subject across the two sides. This can be a really nice way of separating a subject out. For the Nobrow concertina, there were 10 panels on each side of the book. So I put together a pitch document this was my first pitch I'd ever made, so I didn't really know what I was doing. And I'm quite embarrassed looking back at it now and sharing it here, but hopefully it's useful to see. My pitch outlined two ideas. The first one was the space race. I wrote a bit about the idea of doing two sides, one for the USA and one for the USSR. I included some research and reference imagery and then some thumbnail sketches along with a Photoshop layout of the book with my sketches placed across it in a timeline. The second idea was to do it on the theme of spies, which I did some drawing and planning for too. Amazingly, Nobrow gave the go-ahead on the space race direction, which I was over the moon about. To get started, the first thing I did was a whole lot of research. I try to always start with researching. It seems like a good place to kick things off. And I think it's important to get your facts in order, particularly when your subject is historical. For Space Race, there were a lot of dates and events to make sense of. I made folders and folders of research imagery dated by year from 1957 to 1975. I spent a while just collecting different photographs and posters of the key events. I actually found loads of really great stamps from the time and these like really inspired me early on in the project and there was always one for every key event. After doing a load of the test imagery for the pitch and then getting the research done and my timeline in order I felt uh, inspired enough just to kind of start drawing and I always start with thumbnails. Thumbnails are great because you don't have to be too precious. This stage is just about getting as many ideas as you can down on paper. You can quickly explore compositions and find um, things that look good. I often find that if it doesn't read well small, it won't look so good big. So it's worth spending some time on thumbnails, even though they can be a little bit boring. Once I'd done a bunch of thumbnails, I moved on to planning the layout. Early on in the process, the size of a concertina book can be a little bit daunting. So I started with loads of small sketches of the different key events as thumbnails and I wasn't worried about linking them up at this point. I just wanted to get as much drawn as possible. I then made a layout plan in Photoshop, which I dropped my sketches onto. This helped me to see the wider picture and organize my thoughts. This is the USA side and this is the USSR. These documents are a little bit ugly at this point, but I found them really useful to link up the thumbnails to the longer layout sketches coming next. Around this time, we decided to end the book with the um, collaboration of the Apollo and Soyuz spacecraft, which felt like a good place to end the story and connect the two sides of the book. So I then started to try to connect the drawings together, um, aiming to make a continuous flow from one to the next. These longer layouts were where the book really started coming together. I'd always be making lots of notes around the sides. When I was finally happy with the rough layout, I sent it along to the publishers and with a few changes, we were ready to go to colour. The colours themselves were loosely chosen at this point. Uh, we decided on the final ones right at the end. I wanted to uh, have four bright colours that blended together to make some nice darker tones too. 
we also needed to use black to get the depth of deep space correct. With a rough layout in place and the colours loosely chosen, it was time to start the artworking process. I'll explain a little bit about how I made the artwork. Um, my process is quite different now, but this is how I did it back then. So at this time, I was drawing a lot by hand onto uh, my light box. I used the light box to draw the separate elements and layers that I wanted and then scan them in. I'd remove the white background in Photoshop and then arrange all the layers back together again in Photoshop. These are a few examples from the book. I worked on each element of the book separately too. So I do like a ship um, and then an astronaut and so on. I also made textures for the book, all hand drawn or painted. Uh, scanned in ink blotches and generally collected a large bank of hand-drawn material to use throughout this process. I'd then assign colours to the different layers and have them set to multiply on Photoshop so that I could see how they responded to the layers below. This was a um, crowd scene I was experimenting with for the JFK speech. And here's the Apollo Soyuz spacecraft linked up with all their layers coloured and ready to be added to the main artwork. I worked in sections, dividing the book into two halves per side, so panels one to five and then six to ten on each side. Uh, this was mainly to help make the Photoshop files manageable, with so many layers and textures they were slowing down my computer a lot. Uh, you can see the book evolving a bit here. I was adding more artwork to the layout document and stripping away things that weren't working. You can even see uh, the join where I was piecing the two uh, Photoshop files together into one bigger file. So this was my first draft of the colour artwork. It was looking okay. Um, I'd been wrestling with the images for a while and I felt like it was, it was getting there, but I wasn't 100% on it. I shared it with the guys at Nobrow and the collective feeling was that on closer inspection we could actually get a lot more into the book than we currently had. My first draft had focused on just a few key elements of the story. For the USA that was the moon landings and for the USSR that was Yuri Gagarin being the first man in space and the first spacewalk. But that left plenty of panels with much more room to tell more of the story. In this first draft I'd only really been thinking about the image as a whole looking good. I wanted it to work well when it was opened up, but I'd neglected to think uh, how it would look when you read it folded. Viewed from this size, you almost couldn't tell what was going on as you turned the pages. And this discussion made me realise that there was also a need to make something exciting happen on every turn, as well as looking good opened up. I had so much more space to play with and so I went about sketching up a new improved layout with more key events and more to look at. And I remember having a new burst of energy for the book at this point. For some reason making the second uh, final version of the book felt much quicker and a lot smoother. I came up with a new layout design, the plan was better and the imagery was just more exciting to make. I squeezed in loads more key events so it felt like there was something for the viewer on every turn. Much to my surprise, when I came to make this video, I found in the old folders that I'd screenshotted my progress as I'd uh, created the final artwork. So you can see how things developed here. I chop and change things around quite a lot in Photoshop, as you can probably notice.
And now here's a few slides of the finished artwork. Looking at the whole layout, you can see how much more was added to the book on the second version. Here's some of the final artwork closer up. and some photos of the physical book once it was printed. I thought I'd also just touch on the cover quickly too. The cover turned out to be one of my favorite parts of the project. I designed the front as a separate thing first. Here on the left is my first artworking of the cover and on the right, my second. I wanted to make a cover that stood out. So I opted for a really large and brightly colored title I looked at the cover small at the kind of size it would be viewed online and tried to make sure the text was still readable. I hand drew the typography um, based on a font that I was really fond of. And here's uh, some of the textures that I used for the ship lifting off in the background, drawn on a light box. The cover needed to wrap around the concertina, which meant that I extended the drawing out to each side. I really enjoyed extending this image and designing the little profile icon on the left. We also made a French version too. On the inside of the cover, there was some space that naturally felt like it should include some kind of timeline uh, of the events to go with the imagery. I explored a few different ways of doing this. One was uh, as if it were a newspaper, but the information was a bit dense in this execution in the end. And we opted for pulling out a few spot elements from the book and adding the text outlining the event next to them. And this worked really nicely. So at the end, I thought, in summary, I'd maybe mention some of the challenges I encountered along the way. I've made a few books now, and I can say that it's always a challenge making a book. Um, they're never easy. Uh, Space Race was my first, so there was a lot of learning to do on this one. Firstly, um, using the space effectively. My first draft didn't make the best use of the space, and I learned it's important to view a book from the reader's perspective and make something that has exciting imagery to explore on every turn of the page. And uh, managing file sizes, uh, my files got so big with textures that my computer could barely load them. Uh, so I made sure to split the artwork up into separate files for different sections and then further smaller Photoshop files with individual elements. Uh, this helped me make it more manageable and allowed me to test things out in smaller files before adding them to the final finished versions of the master files. Uh, thirdly, um, the print, printing technique color overlay. Uh, understanding color overlay was tricky at times. Uh, this is where the colors print over each other to create new colors. Uh, I often struggle to get my head around how the colours would mix and also how to get the dark areas of space really dark. Uh, but these limitations have a great benefit too. They give the whole book a consistency and inform how you make the artwork. Uh, I'd recommend using a limited colour palette always as it can take a lot of the stress away from choosing new colours each time you artwork an image. And then uh, managing your time. Books can be much more self-directed than other jobs, and as a result, you have to set your own daily schedule. This can be hard, and for Space Race, mine was very off. Uh, I made most of the book late into the evenings. Now I try to stick to normal working hours, even when I'm working from home. That way you can feel like you're doing a more normal job. I also thought I'd mention quickly some of the lessons learned, and I definitely learned a lot of lessons making this book. So making a book is tough. You put your heart and soul into it because it's there forever and has your name on the front. But it's a really rewarding uh, process. And when it's finished, you have a great record of all your hard work. Um, just get started. It's not going to look good at the start. Looking back at mine, it looks pretty bad in the planning stage. And it's easy to worry that it's not good enough. But that is really normal. It's a process of slowly improving things over and over again until you're finally happy with what it's become. So the best thing you can do is just get started. Uh, thirdly, it takes a long time. I didn't realize how long it can take. Uh, I worked on Space Race for around nine months 
And part of me never really wanted to let go of it. I could have kept going and going. Uh, but having a deadline is a great way to make sure you have an end in mind and just being aware that it is a long process, but it's really rewarding. The next one is um, stand back. I always think it's a good idea to view your work from a distance um, from time to time. We spend so much time close up to our work and when you stand back, you, you see it from a new perspective. I often try and even blur my eyes a little bit to see if the image still reads. Uh, when you're stood far away, you can really see if a character or element reads well or disappears onto the page. Ask friends for feedback. Making a book can be quite a solitary process, but it's really useful from time to time to get the opinion of your friends or your publishers. They can often spot things that you haven't and can help out with areas that you're struggling with. When I'm stuck, I always go to friends who have a good eye and ask them for help. And finally, enjoy it. Books are really special projects because they're often much more self-led and you have a lot longer to work on them. When it's getting too much, take a day to do something else and come back with fresh eyes. When you are making work you enjoy, you often make better work. So try and lean towards and draw the things that make you excited. Thanks so much for watching and see you soon. Thanks.